Hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rush Tribes. I am Jessica Rush Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rush Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. How are you doing today? Good. It's uh, Tuesday, October 12th. Um, for most of you, um, it's like any other Tuesday. It's just the day after Monday, the day before Wednesday. Um, what, four days, three days before the weekend? Uh, but for us, it's extra special because this is actually our seventh wedding anniversary, the celebration of our seventh wedding anniversary. So, uh, appropriately, we will be naming this episode anniversary vibes because we are sharing the gift of our wedding anniversary with you all, even though it'll be the next day. So, um, yeah, seven years, seven years of marriage. Uh, um, and you know, kids and jobs and, we were fortunate enough to have uh, only ever lived under one roof while we've been married. The house that mm, uh, current, we lived in too. currently contains Rush Vibe Studios. Uh, well, when we, okay. Well, when we were married, we were in, still living in an apartment for like two weeks, three weeks. And then we got the four weeks. I feel like it was a month. For a month. And then we, we got the keys to this house. But the only house, house we've ever lived in. Mm-hmm. All since we've kids. been, since we've been married. Born in the same house. And um, we are at, Capacity. So no more. We either need a bigger house or we're not having more babies. And I would actually like both. <laughs> I vote for both. Um, because these little, these little bofos, they're going to grow. They're going to stretch and they're going to accumulate stuff. If they're anything like their grandmother on my <laughs> side. Um, they're going to have a lot of stuff. So uh, not a very, very atypical... Um, Anniversary. <coughs> Jessica is uh, is battling something uh, on top of being pregnant, so it's kind of like a melting pot of everything that could could go wrong with you physically. Uh, Thirty five weeks pregnant, still still going strong, still battling, still still trooping. Um, Not going strong at all. And um, of course, this weak. is this is peak crazy season with kids in school and kids in daycare three days a week and I'm working and Jessica's working on top of battling so there's a lot going on very very like I said very atypical anniversary because I went to work we both forgot about our anniversary last week Jessica had to remind me she said you know next Tuesday is our anniversary right and I was like no and I was only reminded I don't know to remind myself because I knew we'd forget and I wasn't even not feeling well then it was just so much you know, we had uh, i think it was the day after our baby shower which we were fortunate enough to have this time around um we didn't get to have a baby shower for sovereign because she showed up the day before her her baby shower or her mother's baby shower or their baby shower so it was nice family friends uh came out um my god sister drove in from tennessee the same day and then drove back Ten hours uh, round trip. Ten hours round trip in one she's, in one day. She's the real MVP. Shout out to Marguerite and um, our uh, our goddaughter and her father, my good good very good friend, um, pretty much pretty much brother Matt drove down from Asheville, so we got to see her and she got to see Solace, her god sister and Sovereign. Uh, then and then a lot of the local family we had here, so it was it was it was uh, it was an awesome weekend. My cousin came down from yes. New York. Yes, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot Esquire. Esquire came through um, in braided hair. Forcibly. As, forci braided hair. Forcibly. She told Solace and Jessica that she was going to braid their hair, and she did a very good job. It just took a two very, days. Very long time. And into very early, the wee hours of the morning each time. So that's what's been going on with us. And tonight we sit here on our anniversary, and we're recording for you, the Vibe Tribe, because... We don't miss episodes, even though I just tried to 
I'm gonna be fully fully transparent. Um, I wasn't feeling it. I felt like it was unfair to force Jessica to sit up here half dead and try to record. So I, we had the first take. I was like, nah, I'm cutting it. I'm pulling the, the EP title. I'm throwing my EP weight around. We're not going to do this. Uh, but Jessica, I guess the true EP, she vetoed my my uh, my stance. And so here we, here we sit. Here we are. And um, I would imagine you all wouldn't blame us for not being too long. Like your pastor says every Sunday, I don't going to be before you long. And then he proceeds to preach for three hours. But that's not going to happen here. I would love to be in and out in 30, 35 minutes. So um, anything you'd like to reflect on seven years of marriage? Um, where do you begin? Um, it's a lot. It's a long time, but it's also very short at the same time. Um, it's weird. Like, I don't know if seven years ago I would have thought... What, you, seven years ago. you be there. sitting here half dead recording a podcast? This this too. Um, but I don't know that I would have thought what seven years of marriage would have looked like. Um, I don't know that you think about seven years of marriage when you get married. Um, and after year one, I questioned. <laughs> I feel like I questioned the marriage. So uh, it's a miracle. Um Jesus saves, uh, and here we are. What can you accomplish in seven years? You can build a house. You can have three kids. Um, you can have great highs and low lows, and a great husband, mediocre middles. Um, I thought you were about to say mediocre husband. I was like, all right, we can cut for real. I mean, you you can have <laughs> you have mediocre <laughs> days, um, but I do too. Uh, so it's 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 just interesting. It's an accomplishment uh, in itself. Every year of marriage is an accomplishment. So, yeah, cheers to seven years. Hopefully, this is the very last year that I will be pregnant on our anniversary because that. It's kind of limiting. Huh? It's kind of limiting. Yeah, because I don't want to be pregnant ever again. Well, then you can't really, there's not a whole lot you can do. It if is. Can you always seem to be like late stage pregnancy mm-hmm. on our anniversary. So it's, it makes things a little tough. Yeah, I can't celebrate. <clears throat> yeah, between Solace and this baby, it's literally the same timeline. Um, and even, and it's even, even Sovereign. Yeah, I think Sovereign further, further along. maybe six months. Six months. So, you know, you just kind of like, Forget broken, celebrate. broken yeah. with sovereign. I was just like, forget celebrating. Like, I, just, I think we got pancakes. We went to snooze. Um, snooze. But I had a rounded belly um, around our our anniversary. So it's been interesting because I won't say we forgot, but it was just kind of like, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, like I bought David's gift today. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't bought her gift yet. I was uh, so my plan today was I had to go out and work. You know, I worked a long day, about twelve hours time time spent. Um, I had to go out to the field, uh, which I've been doing a lot of lately. You know, just the nature of of what what my my team needs right now. And um, I thought I'd be back, be done you know, midday, mid afternoon, two three o'clock, and um, wasn't. It was two thirty, two forty five, and Jessica needed to go to the doctor because she's not feeling well. So. Um, I uh, was going to come back and take her. And then I figure we get back. I go pick up Solace. I can go out and, and get Jessica's gift. Uh, my car breaks down. This after I am at the gas station filling up. So I'm waiting on, I have a fleet vehicle. So I'm trying to wait on the fleet people to come give me a jump or whatever. And like 45 minutes and they're not coming. So I'm like, let me just try to turn this thing back on. And it cranked. So obviously the battery is going bad. It, it, it will be dead at some point, but not today. Not today. <laughs> so uh, drove home, um, exhaled because it was a hell of a day uh, with, without disclosing work stuff and looked up and was like, oh, crap, I got to go get Salas. It's a kid. It's one of ours. We're responsible for it. So, I, you know, one of us needs to pick her up. Jessica's at the doctor. So that leaves me. So I go get Salas. I'm like, OK, uh, the car, it works, thankfully. So I pick Salas up and say, hey, we're going to go get mommy some flowers. So we got just some flowers. 
Um, I do have a proper gift that I want to get her, but it requires us to probably go out together. Um, and I don't know if we're going to be able to get Jessica out of the house for recreational stuff uh, before the baby comes. So we'll see. Uh, very, very long day. But needless to say, I am relishing in the fact that I am able to have a beverage because it's been that kind of day. But we're celebrating. We got to hang out with the girls for a little bit before we put them to bed. And now we're having our rush vibes adult time. It must be nice to relish in a adult beverage. So um, it is. But also I said today is special for a number of different reasons. I'd be remiss if I did not uh, say happy birthday to my grandfather in heaven, Mr. Adam Rushing. Uh, we were fortunate. We were coincidentally uh, picked the 12th of October to get married and my I father pick, I picked this Jessica one. picked it and our friend my father uh surprised me and us um with uh as he spoke at our wedding our ceremony wedding ceremony uh, marriage ceremony. marriage ceremony that uh his only regret was that I I was born too late to not meet my grandfather he died the month before I was born uh but he said you know is I take it's great or something. I can't remember the exact words, but basically he said, you know, I take great pride that, you know, you're getting married on his birthday. And it was a pretty emotional moment. A little misty eyed. A little. I got very misty eyed. Cry like a baby. He did. So shout out to Granddaddy Adam. Um see. We uh the Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. I picked the date. Only because I liked I'm very sequential with numbers. So our anniversary is ten, twelve, fourteen. Sequence of two. So, so yes. shout out to, to Grand Day Adam and, heaven. and, and rest me. in rest in power. We love you and mm-hmm. we miss you. And um I guess Granddaughter Je- I, in love. I guess I guess Jessica. So uh there's been a lot going on. Uh we were supposed to have a guest. Um we actually almost had two guests, three guests. One was supposed to be Esquire, but she was too busy braiding hair. Uh one was supposed to be our goddaughter's father, but we spent too much time in the baby shower and they had to get back in town. And we're actually going to have a repeat guest. The first, I was actually, I was actually really looking forward to this. We we're supposed to have the first ever repeat guest in the same season of Rush Vibes, but um, they flaked. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, scheduling uh, didn't, didn't work out. So, alas, you all are stuck with us again. But a lot going on in the world and uh, in the culture. So we wanted to give, you know, we want to talk about some of it, not all of it, some of it. So. I have some things. Okay. But before I get to my things, did you have anything? I did, but I forgot them all. Okay. Pregnancy brain and all them cocktails you've been taking. <laughs> you've been throwing back. You think I hadn't seen you in the in the, pan, in the pantry where the medicine well, cabinet is. I, I seen you. It's tough because I'm real holistic with like medicine. So I have to like scramble to try and find everybody. Everybody holistic until, until that pain hit. Just like the, when Silas was born, Jessica was like, I don't I don't know. I'm doing full natural. I don't want any epidural. I got this. Man, the contractions got tight. Jessica That's was like, Whoo, give me the epidural. They gave me Pitocin and didn't tell me yeah. they gave me Pitocin. So I they wasn't did on the, they did prepared. On the, they did it on the slide. They were like, you um, slip this. So I was dying and they were like, oh, you're only five centimeters. So I think I looked at David. I was like, if this is five centimeters and I have to go to 10. I'm going to die. Please take yeah. care of her. Love her. So and they, make sure she's they, surrounded. They gave, they gave her that epidural. Now, the Sovereign, she was totally was, natural because... There was no time. Was, she came very quickly. And Jessica passed out. So they couldn't drug her because she was already out. So I did. I was... <laughs> they asked me if I wanted one. I was starting to say yes. Yeah, fade, I was also, fade to black. <laughs> fade to black. But I was also looking for my doula because I told my doula I wanted a natural birth. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, Savi and my doula were on the same page, so I didn't get a chance to yeah. to get it. But whew, that was that was that was rough. Um, very traumatic. Um, but no, I don't have anything. So. So uh, we live in North Carolina. We do. The Tar Heel State, as it's popularly uh, referred to as. And um, as in most states, all states, uh, we have a governor who was elected by the public. Elected. And a lieutenant governor who was also elected by the public. Uh, 
our lieutenant governor happens to be the man by the name of Mr. Mark Robinson, a Republican. Doesn't really, you know, party's not, doesn't really matter, but it kind of does. <clears throat> so uh, I believe he's the first black lieutenant governor in our state. So that's commendable. Shout out to Breaking Barriers, Glass Ceilings, Shattering. It's awesome. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. He's, he'll forever be remembered as the first black lieutenant governor in North Carolina. That's not, that's not, he may be remembered for other things, but eventually you will get to the fact that he was the first black lieutenant we governor. We don't know this man. In, uh, in North Carolina. And that, that is, that we is, we feel sorry. That is nothing man. to be taken lightly. I will say that and I say the wholeheartedly. Um, despite what I'm about to read. So uh, he was in the press. He was in headlines. Uh, I think it was last week or the week before last. For um, October 11th, so it was last week. Uh, for comments, or this week. October 11th, that was Monday. That was Monday. That was yesterday. But he made some statements. I think it was last week. Anyways, he was speaking somewhere. And um, he made a comment. Because uh, he was speaking on kids. And things that they should and shouldn't be taught in school. And he said, uh, there's, quote, there's no reason anybody anywhere in America should be telling any child about transgenderism, homosexuality, any of that filth, end quote. And he said this at Asbury Baptist Church in Seagrove, I imagine, in North Carolina. So uh, you can imagine that did not go over well with anyone. <laughs> not... <laughs> Not probably far, 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 far right conservative um, or just super diehard Christian. And um, he has been, there are people calling for him to resign. Um, but he actually doubled down on it and he said, if anybody has a problem with it, you can tell them to come see me. He was like, catch me outside, basically is what he said. Yeah, he's going to catch some hands. So there's a, I think it came out today, there's a coalition of pastors and faith leaders who want to go to go meet with him. Uh, they wrote a letter and said they'd like to sit down and, and let him uh, sit in front or across a, across from people whose words, uh, people, people who his words likely hurt uh, and offended. And um, they were they were very quick to say that, you know, these were not words of God. Uh, God loves us all. We are created in his image. We are called to love. This is absolutely true if you are a uh, Christian and you are a believer. Uh, now, Mr. Robinson tried to... Uh, distance himself uh, from his position when he made these comments that he was not speaking um, as a lieutenant governor. He was speaking as a person. They were his personal beliefs. However, when you are elected to serve and preside over a entire, an entire state, you are the lieutenant governor for all North Carolinians, not just the ones who voted for you. So my wife, how do you feel about these comments? I mean, I don't like him, so I haven't liked him since he got elected. I'm not surprised that he made these comments. Um, I don't think they were necessary. Um, it's like picking an unnecessary battle when we already have too much going on. Yeah. Because um, he's been on education. Like, he's not a believer that... Um, what was it? Not this. He was he was on the critical race theory train. Sure. Um, pretty much saying that like everything that people are the propaganda that we're saying about you know black history is false. And so I was done with him then. I was actually done with him when he got elected. Something about his face just rubbed me the wrong way. Um, Cause he the thing about and I. Black Republicans are so complicated because... The thoughts expressed by Jessica belong to her and her himself. They're I'm, not indicative or reflective of the overall views of us here at Rush Vibes. Please continue. I also don't feel well, um, and I'm dealing with contractions. Um, so I'm probably going to say some ratchet stuff. But, like, one, his face just didn't rub me the right way. Two, black Republicans, they, there are very few black Republicans who seem to speak of their own mind and not of what white Republicans say. Well, how do you know they're they're not speaking their mind? Man, you know, I feel like they just want to be accepted. Like, I mean, 
Well, I think I, that's. I went to. I went. I know what it's like to be in predominantly white spaces. So you want to fit in? I'm sure. Well, I think that's any. That's any politician, though, right? Like, if you have a base, you kind of have to to pander and, and and. But I'm sure foundationally, he does have Republican beliefs. Um, in terms of like. Um, what do they even believe in? Um, you know, don't take care of other people, take care of big business. Um, I, I don't. I don't think that that's any, any bylaws or. or I mean, that seems like <laughs> commitments because they're always they're, they're always they're, they're they're pro life. T- uh, typically, they like to say they're fiscally uh, responsible. Okay. Um, so don't take care of other people. Uh, uh, they're they're for take care of big business, uh, rolling back taxes, not not imposing new taxes. Yeah, not um, providing medical care for you know their fellow citizens. So I mean, they're just they're just they're not the Jesus party that they want us to believe. Um, rolling back mandates for vaccines in Texas, all the other stuff. Um, so I'm just I'm not. I just think it was an unnecessary statement. Like you can have your beliefs. Uh, I'm a firm believer that people should and do have their own beliefs. It's not always necessary to say them in public spaces. Just like you said, you're, he's a politician who's been elected. Um, it's, it's actually like a, it's a two edged sword because yes, people should know what you believe so we can know not to vote for you again. Um, but people should, should just have common sense in terms of like, hmm, if I say this statement, am I going to get canceled? Who am I going to offend? But you know what? The people that he is offending are not the people that voted for him. So, sure. well, I guess it, I guess it, it brings up a very interesting question, right? Like, should you, should you sacrifice? Do you see that just attack? No. Should you sacrifice uh, your beliefs? Uh, simply because of your occupation, right? Like, granted, yeah, he's a lieutenant governor, but does that mean he's not allowed to have his beliefs, or does that mean he's not allowed to express them? Um, I think would would be a question some would ask. Like, I don't know. I'm just I'm just posing questions here. Um, I think it's I think there's a there's a, a there's an element of and a level of discernment. I think that you should have uh, when you do serve in, in in certain capacities, and understand that. Um, you know, when you say things like any of that filth, I, I think it. I, I think it's it's okay to maybe not um, believe something, or maybe disagree, or not understand something, and to be transparent about that. Um, but there's a way that you say things, um, and there's a way that you shouldn't say things. And I think he shouldn't have said it this way, um, because the truth, the fact of the matter is, is whether or not you understand transgenderism <laughs> homosexuality um uh or, or any of the other said filth uh does not mean that you should refer to it as such it's just something that you either don't understand you don't know enough about or you may not agree with but because you don't agree with something doesn't automatically make it filth it just means it doesn't align with who you are uh but you think when you are a lieutenant governor and you you know you co-preside or preside over a state i think you have to be considerate of the people who you are um who your your say so and your your the decisions you make have influence over their lives and if they can't be confident that you're someone who can be for them despite whether your views align uh, i think that's a dangerous thing and, and people feel like they can't as I mean people already don't feel like they can trust government but i mean you give them reason not to uh when you say things like this um but maybe, like you said, it's a good thing he did say it because now we, you know, he's he's been seen. Like we we know who you are, and you know this is a very we're still in the Bible Belt. It's a very southern state. Uh, it's gone for Trump, <clears throat> and you know we have lieutenant lieutenant uh, a Republican lieutenant governor. So you know maybe maybe he was speaking things that his base approves of. But I, I would hope, and I'm inclined to believe that his general base does not believe that it's filth. Um, I think. It's something that they don't understand, and I think uh, hopefully a lot of them are trying trying to want to get there, um, but have have a ways to go. But uh, my my personal opinion, totally out of pocket, not some not something that you should say uh, if you're ignorant. Um, 
that's one thing. And I guess he showed his ignorance uh, by referring to transgenderism and homosexuality as, as filth. Uh, he's kind of shown his ass. So it's unfortunate. Uh, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's just the go-to thing now that anytime you say something that's um, probably not the most thought out or something that's just, I like I said, out of pocket, automatically you have to resign. I don't think he will. I don't think he'll get enough pressure to resign. Um, but it may be something that comes back to haunt him uh, the next time he's up for, for re-election. So it's a crazy time. I don't know why we can't just be, I don't know why we can't just be accepting Oh. I will say that anytime like people are so passionate about, you know, insulting people of a different lifestyle than them, I feel like they have curiosities. So I mean like they're posing? I'm just saying they might be in bathroom stalls tap dancing. Giving signals. Giving giving hand signals. Um <laughs> Yeah, maybe. All right, let's take a break. Let's come back and let's uh Let's get out of here. I've got a couple other things I want to bring up. So we'll be right back. All right. And we back and we back and we back again. So we just uh, talked about our, our lieutenant governor. Our questionable lieutenant governor. <laughs> questionable lieutenant governor and him referring to his transgenderism and homosexuality is felt. So we're interested to know, Cousin Chen and everybody else. Uh, how you guys feel about these statements? Uh, we can link the article below uh, the, the the episode, and you can kind of go read it for yourself. I read it from the AP News, so as far as I know, they're not slaying one way or the other. I'm just saying. Um, but Sage Steele, your girl. Is she my? <laughs> I just like her name. Sage Jessica. Almost she was like, we should name one of our our daughters Sage. I was like, hell no. I just don't like the name Sage. Um, and who knows, kids might like try to light her on fire or something. So uh, Sage Steele, like <laughs> a newspaper, a news, uh, a newspaper. She's a uh, sports journalist, famously for ESPN. Uh, went on a podcast the other day, uh, the podcast of Jay Cutler, former NFL football or former NFL quarterback uh, for the Chicago Bears. I think he he was for the he played for the Broncos too in his late stages. Or maybe it was it was reverse. Either way, out out of the league uh, has a podcast, and um, I guess she was re- she was talking about the vaccine mandate because I believe ESPN has a has a vaccine mandate or ABC Disney has a vaccine mandate, and she was saying you know she didn't agree with it and it was kind of disgusting and um, you know she said that and then moved on. I guess part of the conversation someone had had asked her about the census. Uh, and what she was going to put, I believe her parents are biracial, or she's biracial. Um, and, uh, they, the person referenced President Obama, how, you know, she, I guess, I think Sage said she wanted to put both. Um, and a friend said, you can't put both, you have to put one. And the person referenced Obama, President Obama, Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, first black president, um, mentioned how he selects black for his race on the census. And she said, well, you know, that's fine. That's the president's choice. Although I find it interesting that he would be considered himself black, considering his black dad wasn't around when he was growing up, what does that have and to do with? and he was raised by his white mother and grandmother, and she's like, "But you do you, I'll do me," and that caught the attention of a lot of people, <clears throat> understandably so. Again, we talk about undertones, right? But dog, sage, dog, sage dog, whist, dog, whist, dog, whist. Sage is biracial. Sage is black. Sage is biracial. Uh, dog whistling type stuff, right? When you reference the fact that a black man wasn't around for his kids, it's one of the unfair stereotypes uh, that portrayed of the uh, the black community. And coming from a half black woman, it's like, what you doing? Then again, Sage Steele, if you know her, some of the things she said, it's really not all that surprising. So uh, a lot of people felt like it was out of bounds to make, I guess, make the statement in that way because we were like, what are you trying, like you said, what are you trying to imply? Because one, it has nothing to do with what you identify as, whether your dad was around or not. Um, but also, like, why make the comment or phrase the comment or the statement that way? Like, what are you, what exactly are you trying to get at? Like, he can't be black because his dad wasn't around or his black dad wasn't around. Like, I, I don't know. It didn't really make sense to me. But I think the most flagrant comment <clears throat> 
excuse me, that she made uh, wasn't about Obama and what he identifies as, but they also talked about women uh, journalism, ju- journalists. And she said that there are some uh, young up and coming uh, female journalists who have reached out to her to look at like their tape or whatever. And she said, no, I can't because of the stuff you're wearing. And she's saying, you know, when you, I'm not, I mean, the, the, the famous, I'm not saying this, but she said, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, athletes should get away with the derogatory comments that they make toward women. But when you wear certain outfits, you know what you're doing. It's coming from a woman, by the way. Sage Steele is, is a woman, I, I think. I think that's what she identifies. I'm pretty sure that's what she identifies as. So I think that was the most outrageous thing that she said because it's like, did you really do the whole, the whole, like, Oh, if she hadn't have worn that, he wouldn't have done. She did. So it's like foul. But again, your thoughts. I no longer like her. You liked her before? I don't know. I just liked her name. Um, and it was like, oh, a black woman on ESPN. But I guess she's not black. No, she's um, black and white. But she she's uh, both. She appears black. She appears biracial. Her skin presents itself as black. As biracial. No, it doesn't. She's brown. Ish. <laughs> she's brown ish. If you didn't tell me this, she's just always been black to me. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. I mean, she I was... thought I thought she was I always thought she was black. I didn't realize until she started um she she got into the headlines over the last couple of years that she was mixed. I thought she was black. You know. I mean, light skin. You can you can be mixed. yellow. You can be mixed and be black. Um I sympathize for her. Um, I don't even know what to say. I don't know know what where to begin. Uh, didn't she get suspended? For she was she was suspended for a week. I believe this week she's serving her suspension for co- for not um, getting the the vaccine. I think she had she got the vaccine. I think she was suspended for her vaccine comments, not the okay. the and Obama. She redacted those, right? Uh, I don't know if she walked them back. I think she apologized for probably saying them out loud, not necessarily okay. having those views. Um. But I want to be clear, she was suspended for the vaccine comments, not necessarily what she said about Obama or other reporters. Because, you know, like freedom of speech, right? Like you're allowed to have your opinions and, and whatever. And people are allowed to react to them. But that doesn't mean you should necessarily be punished for how you feel mm-hmm. about certain things. Um, but I guess the vaccine thing was, was one <laughs> one step too far. Yeah, so. I mean, she's... I feel like people are entitled to have opinions regarding the vaccine. Um, it's It's complex. Is it? I I think it is. Uh, it's it it it's very complex because mm-hmm. yes, I just said that. Oh, okay, just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Uh, because yes, people have the right to their opinion, the right to their feelings, um, freedom of speech, uh, freedom, my freedoms, liberties. You know, don't tread on me. Yeah, midnight ride of Paul Revere, all that good stuff. Um. That was the dude who said uh, the British are coming, right? Yes. Okay. Whew. I was all that man. We got. I have to cut this out. Um, I'm gonna cut that out. But yeah, I think I believe it. Would, no, yeah, the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. So you know, I get the whole. It's not fair to mandate. Like, yeah, whatever. Um, Where do you get it? What's gettable about it? I think because just because it seems like it is in infringing upon your individual rights for your health, like prior to the pandemic, if you didn't want to get a flu shot, like you didn't have to get a flu shot. Um, I think the the tricky thing is vaccines were only a thing that were put on kids. So this is the first time that adults are having to because when think about it once you hit 18 i think typically that's the last vaccine you usually have to get um you've gotten all your boosters tuberculosis whatever other acronym so this is the first time people are being forced to do something that is out of their control so i get people trying to pause and be like uh hold up like what do you mean i have to do this um but the thing with America is cancel culture is real. Uh, and 
your opinion is not safe because if your opinion deviates from the majority, then you are, you know, you're defiant, you're a deviant. Um, but if you, I don't know, I'm not even going to get too deep into that because it's just, it's such a, a rabbit hole. But I will say, like, she's black. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, honey. You're you're black. Yes, you might have a white mom or a white dad. Congratulations to you. But, you know, when someone in in this day in America, you don't even if you are biracial, you're going to favor one race over the other. Um, if you get pulled over, you're you're because of the color of your skin that's going to determine how you get treated uh unfortunately like you're not going to be able to tell an officer like oh i'm biracial and they go oh excuse me well carry on with the rest of your day i'm going to allow the white side of you to you know mosey along uh tell your mother to call and vouch for your your race so you know i think she just needs to accept that i have found a lot of biracial people are very particular with how they're identified and it's usually ones that like look black that they're like no i'm biracial and it's like okay sis you're biracial we appreciate that but you you look black um and if well you- i mean to be fair if we're if we're to say that people are, are allowed to be to identify as um you know a woman you know um, once they've transitioned, why can we allow biracial people to identify as black or white? I want them to identify as black or white. Yeah, but you just said not cis, you black. If they say, I'm, I'm, or, or if they if they want to just identify as biracial, why can't we allow that? Because society doesn't give you that look. Like, you can identify yourself. I mean, shoot, I'm biracial. Like, I don't know. I'll say, if I say I'm biracial, but if you pull me over, I'm black. If I get into an elevator with someone, they might clutch their purse because I'm black. Anybody gonna clutch their purse I can't say, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm actually biracial. And they'd be like, oh, in that case, like... So I think that I think that there's a, there's a difference between what you identify as and what people perceive you as. People can perceive so you as... is as, as, perceived as black. You perceive her as black. Because she's black. Do I not know what she looks like? Um... Because she's black. So speaking of, of, of vaccines, because I, I want to I keep it rolling, I do not want to end up with an hour-long episode. Uh, Kyrie Irving, your boy. Yep. Is uh, apparently unvaccinated. Um, and there are, the NBA has said that any, you have to comply with, I guess that you have to comply with vaccine Y'all, she's black. laws or rules of the state in which you live. So apparently she's in New York, black. If you're unvaccinated, you can't be in um, public spaces. Uh, same thing for like San Francisco. That's so true. basically Kyrie could not participate in home games and practices. Or I think they came back and said the practice facility was a private facility. So therefore he could practice with his team, but he couldn't play in home games. So he would basically miss out on 41 games a season. So the Nets came back and said, uh, no, you are hereby banned from all team activities until you are eligible to fully participate in the basketball in the basketball season, NBA season. That news came out today, mm-hmm. Tuesday, October twelfth. Again, I ask your thoughts. So, Sage is black. Um, but Sage identifies as biracial. She black, but she does have a white husband, and her kids are real fair skinned so they can identify as biracial biracial um poor Kyrie because his poor Kyrie yeah because like his career is gone I think he loses 365 444,000 I heard 365 a game but okay um your number my number regardless he's losing nearly I think half the number identifies as 440 440,000 I think he is Losing close to half a million dollars a game. Fifteen million would be his total forfeiture if he were to. And and that's unfortunate because. Home games. And that's another thing with with COVID and this vaccine is is, you know, I don't know his reasons for not wanting to get the shot, 
Um, I know he's very, like, isn't he vegan and native? And, like, isn't his name, like, walks with water or something like that? Um, so his principles are, hey, I don't do vaccines. Uh, I don't know how far back this goes, if this is, like, a new trend because COVID is the vaccine. Because, again, like I mentioned earlier, adults, like, typically once you hit 18, you've gotten all the vaccine. Like, they've pumped you with all this stuff. Um, so from, like... Why you say like that? Because if you look pumped at... you with all this if stuff. If you look at, like, the... From like they like they every time they give you a shot, you're getting high fructose corn syrup injected into your you, into your you veins. probably are. So from you know from birth until 18, you're getting all these shots: hepatitis, tuberculosis, whatever itis, whatever everything. Um, plus flu. Did shots. you get these shots? Huh? Did you get these shots? Growing up, yeah, yeah. That's why I have. How them. you feeling? Right you feel now, good? I know I feel you about terrible. To mu- you about to mutate. I feel terrible. Is there is there a that's Windows is there a Windows ninety five symbol that's about to appear on your arm? Well, that's why I is have there a this, chip? Anyway, that's why I have this divot in my thigh because they kept giving me shots. You got a divot in your thigh because you're thick. No, it's a. It's and that's a, okay. That's not it. Nothing wrong with thickness. That's Embrace not, your thickness. Can you be quiet? Coke bottle. Anyway, I have a divot in as my as God thigh. intended for you. Okay, I'm going to bed. I mean, I imagine you'll go to bed eventually. Are you going to stop talking over I'm just me? Saying. I'm talking, anyway, I'm talking with you. No, I don't want you to talk with me. I just want you to be quiet. Okay. So I have a divot in my thigh because every time I would get, my doctor would keep giving me shots in the same exact spot. So, um, not cool. But I don't know. So from day one of birth up to 18, you're just getting shot, shot, shots. Not and not like, <laughs> not, the, not the fun shots. Um, so, you know, after you turn 18, you're like, Ooh, I'm in the clear. You don't have to worry about getting shots unless you're a medical professional. And I think they they suggest you get the flu shots, but it's not. It wasn't mandatory. So now we're in this place where it's like pe- companies, your job, your cities, your society is telling you if you want to function in this society, you need to get this shot. And people are just like, how are you going to tell me what I need to do? It's interesting because there are plenty of things that we're told to do on a regular basis. We are told to abide by a speed limit. We are told to have a driver's license before we drive. We are told to be 21 before we can buy alcohol. We are told to be certain ages before we can enter certain establishments or make certain purchases. So we have restrictions as a society, but the vaccine is like, it seems like it's seen as an invasion of my person. I feel for Kyrie because, yes, he's losing a lot. I don't know his background or his principles on on vaccines. I don't even know if he has kids or anything because I would assume um, if he's so passionate about not getting the COVID vaccine, then he's got kids that are not getting vaccines either um, because then that would be backwards in my opinion. So... You know, he might just have to take the L. I don't know if we're ever going to get to a point in this society where you don't have to, like, where there are enough people who have gotten the vaccine where we don't have to, like, everyone. you're uh, referring to herd immunity? Yeah. I don't know if we're ever going to get to that place. It doesn't seem likely because now they're like, okay, time for shot three. Oh, you got shot three? It seems like they just keep pumping boosters. Um, Hang on with this pump word again. it It just seems like a lot. Like a lot of shots, and not fun shots. Uh, I, I I would I would push back. Uh, looking at trying to look at this objectively, I would say no one is forcing you to get a vaccine. Um, but you do have as in Kyrie's case, no one's saying he has to get it. But he has to get it if he they wants are. to continue to play basketball. You don't have to. You can retire. You can go into be a private citizen and do whatever you want to do. But if you want to play basketball in New York for the Brooklyn Nets, you need to be vaccinated. But he has a choice. Mm-hmm. So, I also don't think it's fair that we ha- that his health choices are public knowledge. Like I feel like that, I, it that feels a, like that a hippo violation. That is a very that is a very good point. I, I, and, I, and it's so funny. I, I said this on a, on a call with um, with HR at my my job. Um, anytime something medically comes up as it pertains to like an employee, everybody says it's a hippo violation. <laughs> Like you can tell somebody, like man, this dude sneezed on me last week. Somebody be like, 
I think that might be a HIPAA violation. I don't think you can say that. So um, I, I, I don't know that it is or it isn't. Um, I do think it's, it's unfortunate that it has become public. Uh, and such is, is life in the world and in, in, the, in the world that we live in, especially with social media and all that and leaks and, and people telling things. And, and, and I think it is uh, very unfortunate that, that it became public and now people know about it because it, you know, and that's something that the Nets and, and Kyrie should, should be able to work out behind closed doors. But at the same time, if he's not showing up for preseason basketball games and he's not at home practices and there are beat writers and reporters there, and they're like, hey, I mean, you, you notice when Kyrie's not around, he's, he's like one of the top 20 players in the league. Um, people are going to ask questions, and there's only so long that, you know, that secret's not going to be let out. So it would have come out eventually, I think, but I think uh, it, it, is, it is unfortunate that it is public knowledge. But at the same time, you know, this is this is the world we live in. So, you know, if if you want to play ball, you want to get paid, you have to get a vaccine. Um, and that's just an unfortunate choice to facing Kyrie. And it's an unfortunate choice to facing a lot of Americans, right? Like there's a lot of companies rolling out vaccine mandates. Biden said every federal worker needs to get it. Um, some of the airlines have mandated it for their employees. My company's mandated it. So, uh, you know, people got to make decisions, but they are left with choices. And, um, you know, they gotta, everybody's got to make the best choice for themselves. But. I know. think he should just go play in Texas or Florida. He should just transfer to another. Team. Well, the thing is, is that every team is going to have to play in either California or New York. So, okay, so, he, so he's going to have to miss games. But then you, you have to think about the other players on your team, right? At what point is accommodating one player so much too much where you neglect the other players on the team and they start to feel some kind of way chemistry is a tricky thing and i know people think nba players don't care about winning all they care about is their money and their girls and their mansions and their and their diamonds and their and their and their music videos and whatever and their weed but um i would argue that probably 85 percent of nba players really do want to win and compete and build that team culture and it's really hard to do if one person is getting treated so much differently um, than others, especially when it may be unjustified. So I don't know that that will work either. I don't know teams are going to, and you have to trade somebody for him, right? You have to give somebody up for Kyrie. I mean, so who are you, who are you willing to, to, to give up for someone who may not be around? Like Kyrie is, is a total wild card. Like dude could just oh yeah, be like, he just disappear. They could just be like, yo, I'm not, I'm not coming in for a week. <laughs> and that week you could be playing like the Lakers, the Warriors, like you could be playing like juggernauts and you don't have your best, you know, one of your top two players because they just they needed time off. And I'm I'm a I'm an advocate of taking time off that you need, mental health, but um some notice would be nice. You know, I don't know, Kyrie, you're gonna get notice with Kyrie. So anyways, it's uh you know, those are those are three things that kinda hit headlines this week and wanted to touch on. I obviously uh try to stay abreast. Of things that are going on, Twitter is, is a, a, an amazing tool. Uh, shout out to uh, Big Little Brother Allen. Um, but wanted to get your opinion on these things. So, right about forty eight minutes. I think it's a good place to stop. Did you have anything else you wanted to add before we? No, I can't remember. Go ahead and close out. Okay, cool. So, uh, hopefully, we'll have a guest in here next week. <coughs> um, based on, <laughs> I'm gonna say, it. don't say it's the wrong way, but based on Jessica's condition. Um, I don't know how many more of these we're going to get in. This might be the last one. This could be the last one. There's a very decent probability that this is the last one. So if it is, we do want to say that we appreciate every single one of you who have tuned into an episode of Rush Vibes, whether you've listened, whether you've watched, whether you've listened for five minutes, whether you've watched for two minutes, whether you've watched all 47 episodes or listened all 40, 47 episodes or whatever number, right? I think it's 47 we love and appreciate you guys. This thing started as like, what are we going to do? It's a pandemic. We can't go outside. Let's do a podcast. Let's put the kids to bed and have one night a week where we get to just talk about whatever we want to talk about and just put on the internet and see who wants to vibe with us. And here we are, 88 subscribers on, on YouTube, uh, 100 followers on Instagram, over 100 followers and likes on Facebook later. Rush Vibes is the thing. And it's the thing that's going to continue with season two. Um... So we're going to let this new baby come into the world. We're going to let my wife recover. And then we're going to have season two. We're going to have a whole bunch of guests. People around Charlotte, local people. 
not just in Charlotte, but you know, local people, small people who are doing great and, and, and extraordinary things who, who, who are 88 subscribers, which will grow. It will grow. I uh, need to know about. So, um, I will say that, um, did we announce the gender? We did not. So not on, not on here. So Saturday was our gender reveal baby shower. So we weren't aware of, um, what the gender of the baby was. We found, we, we got the information at 20 weeks. They put it in an envelope, never opened the envelope. So we showed a handful of people, uh, our cousin Esquire and uh, mom, David's mom, uh, were the first two to find out. And then, you know, they, mom and Sarah, uh, our sister-in-law, they planned the baby shower. So we went 14 weeks with the information in hand and never looked at it. Um, and come to find out, we are having our third daughter. Um, so, you know, we've got the... That would be a trifecta, right? That is a trifecta. A trifecta, Absolutely. trilogy, um, all that Three piece. Stuff. Three piece. Um, the registries are still up, so if you want to contribute to <laughs> the fund, by all means, uh, most pressing thing things are Diaper Genie and a three-row SUV. So we will take that blessing if you want to. Most people will obviously default to the genie, and that's okay. That's fine. We only need one genie. As long as it's like a self uh, air freshening genie, like a like some sort of contraption where there's like a in, like a built in air freshening genies be in foul. They do, um, but we only need one genie. And we don't have we're we're, we're not in the hot, we're not poo pooing in the hot cotton like Melissa and Craig down in Texas, and we can't get trash two night two days a week. Two come days pick a up. week. They said that trash runs two days a week because they in the hot cotton. We ain't we we ain't got it like y'all. So we got once a week on Friday mornings. That's ridiculous. So we need an air freshening genie. Um, but we are registered at Bye Bye Baby, Target, and Jeff Bezos. Yes, that guy. So um, feel free to send something our way, uh, or send prayers. Um, lots of prayers because I need this baby to start exiting soon. But. Uh, we are excited to have our third and final girl um, and meet her and see how she fits into our little our little family. I guess we're not a little family anymore. We're we're a crew. Yep. So so yeah, don't ask us for a ride because we don't have space for you. So uh, while we're gone, we will be uh, we won't be probably doing too many new episodes. But what, one thing we will be doing is one we'll create a new YouTube uh, channel called Rush Vibes Clips. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll be chopping up episodes uh, from this past season and, uh, you know, just little quick segments. People may have missed because, you know, hour long episodes are really long. People don't have attention spans, even in a pandemic. So we'll be uh, cutting those up, putting those out um, on a on a uh, on some sort of schedule so that you guys can still get your Rush Vibe content and probably stuff that you've missed. So don't forget to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, like the video, subscribe uh, once again. Hopefully we'll have a couple more episodes, but if not, uh, it's been a blast. We love you guys. We appreciate the support. As always, stay safe, stay blessed, be well. Be rested. Be rested. Rush Vibes, we love you guys. We out. Let me down